Good morning, Facebook family and Trinity E-Church family. It is Sunday, May the 3rd, the first Sunday of May, and the Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day to be in the Lord's house and to be in worship. And I just want to thank you for tuning in with us and, being, uh, and joining us in worship online, live, at Trinity Baptist Community Church International. Let me just give you a little bit of information as we start out our time, this Trinity Hour, together. Trinity Baptist Community Church International uh, is located in Crystal Lake on Route 31, 59, 18 South Illinois, Route 31. And our worship services uh, online begin at 11 a.m. You can tune in with us on the website, trinitybcci.org. You can join with us on Facebook, Trinity Baptist Community Church. You can join, you can see our broadcast uh, immediately after service on YouTube. Our taping is immediately uploaded on Sunday afternoon on YouTube. You can join us live on Periscope if you're tuning with us today. At 7 p.m. on Sundays, uh, our radio broadcast is on WYLL 1160 AM. Please feel free to join us for that. And on Total Living Network, our TV, our TV broadcasts are I aired, previous broadcasts are aired, podcasts on Total Living Network and on Comcast Cable. We're excited to be able to have the Trinity E-Church on so many different uh, electronic venues, and it's a blessing to be able to reach you wherever you are worldwide. And again, we thank you for joining us. Uh, during the weekdays, we, have, we launch out on Facebook our daily devotionals, our daily bread devotionals. We hope that you will sign like us on Facebook and so that you can receive our daily bread devotionals. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays around the noon hour, I'll be doing, a, I, I normally tape a devotional moments with Bishop Love. It's about a seven minute teaching and devotional broadcast uh, to prayerfully to be able to encourage you and strengthen you in your walk and your study throughout the week. We've got a lot of great things going on, and it's a beautiful day to get this month started and kicked off on. So at this moment, as we prepare to move into our time of praise and worship, now let me introduce the First Lady, Dr. Karen Love, to lead us in our worship and praise segment on this morning. Again, welcome. God bless you, and welcome to our worship experience today. Uh, good morning, Trinity E Church and Facebook E Church and the community at large. Whew, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. You know, I was reflecting this morning and, and talking to God and said, God, uh, let let my bring clarity to my purpose. I mean, e even greater, uh, what you want me to do. And God just, who? Strengthen me up to go through to share your word. And I was so excited about, about uh, what he did in terms of speaking to my heart and all the experiences and, and all the triumphs and, and, and even through the tragedies, how God is made known. And so I just want to share with you this morning uh, Psalm 118, verses 20 to 24. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made, starting from verse 14. Ooh, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does violently, violently. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stones that the builders rejected has been the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So I want everyone to get on your feet at home, start singing. We're gonna sing, this is the day the Lord has made. Everyone knows that song. So let's just come together 
raise up the roof in the households and the communities in your neighborhood and proclaim that truly this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, okay. Well, Satan's definitely not going to have his way this morning. All right, here we go. the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it this is the day that the lord has made i will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day this is the day that the lord has made okay this is for satan listen this is the week yes this is the week of the devil's defeat, of the devil's defeat. Come on now. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Yes, this is the week of the devil's defeat. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, this is the week, this is the week of the devil's defeat. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I would say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be very glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Yeah, this is the month. This is the month of the Lord's triumph. Of the Lord's triumph. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the month of the Lord's triumph. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, this is the month. This is the month that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I would say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. To his yes. Today. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Amen. 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 Whew. I tell you, Satan tries to throw you a ringer. Moses. Satan tries to throw you a ringer, but God is, and God does. And we have seen so many wonderful things that God has done over our lives. And so I just want to just take this moment and to just thank God for what he's done. Thank God for everything that I've been through. He's always been there for me. I want to thank God for his richness. I want to thank God for his glory and his majesty. I want to read to you this verse that leads, as we go into prayer. No matter what the circumstance or the barriers or the situations, here's what 1 Chronicles 16, 23 to 31 says. It says, sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nation, the Lord reigns. Father, we thank you for this day and for this moment in time. God, thank you that technology will not stop your word being proclaimed. God, it doesn't matter the hiccups that's thrown in because we know that you are still Lord of Lords. You are still sovereign. You're still on the throne. You still have all authority. Nothing moves that. So God, we just thank you for this privilege of being here today to proclaim your name over the airways. God, sometimes we think in our flesh, oh, it has to be perfect, but no, it doesn't as long it is unto you to serve you, to give our best. So God, for this moment in time, I pray for those that are listening. God, I pray for those households. I pray for those, those moms who doesn't know what to do with their teens or with their children. God, I pray that this time will be declared your time in the households. That families will come together and start praying and start reading and start learning about you, God. It doesn't matter what the government says, God. It matters what you say, God, because you have conquered death. And because you, have, because you have done so, we will live forever. So we thank you, God, for you are truly amazing, God. You are so amazing, God. I'm so humbled right now on each and every Sunday. And God, I just remember just feeling that moment, that just that moment of, of isolation when we, we were, Rev and I were talking about, you know, how we're going to go forth in this ministry. But God, I give that back to you. Because you see all things, you know all things, you delight in us. And you send those ministering angels. So we want to thank you for this day. And for those who have come aboard. So what can I do? <laughs> we are so humbled, we're so gracious, God, and we're so loving. And thank you for every week you have not missed a beat in, in speaking to our hearts to speak that word forth in your name and to go boldly, God, because just like Mary, excuse me, just like Jeremiah say, if I would not remember you nor speak anymore in your name, it's just like fire shut up in our bones. So God, I ask for that fire to be proclaimed in every household, God, that every member, every son, every daughter, every child, every parent, every grandparent, every uncle, every aunt will proclaim your name. You're such an awesome God and you're such a worthy God and you're worthy to be praised. 
In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let the church say amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Turn with me, turn with me if you will, this, uh, this beautiful first Sunday in May. And let me mention to you that this is uh, also Communion Sunday. So online communion, virtual communion. We're praying that you have, you have or you will before the end of the service time uh, set aside a little bread and a little juice so that we can come together over the internet and share communion one with another. Uh, we thank God for that opportunity. Turn with me in your Bibles to, to Acts chapter 3. I want to give you, want to focus you on once again a very familiar episode in the life and the times of the apostles, the disciples and the apostles. You'll be very familiar with this, this episode that's recorded in verses 1 through 10, the first segment of this encounter here. And we want to take a fresh look at it, bring a fresh set of spiritual eyes to this encounter here. I found myself really uh, appreciating how God has this marvelous way of opening up uh, fresh insights into his word. When you come to it, you can read it, you can study it many times over. But whenever you come to the Lord with an open heart and open mind and open spirit, he has a way of pointing you, drilling you right down into some important areas of it. And he did that for me this week. It was a very special and intimate time together. We're, we're concluding the fifth sermon in our five sermon series entitled The Resurrection of Hope. And our episode is taken, I've got two life lessons for you today. Our episode is taken from verses one through 10. Our themes for today from this study time together uh, are focused in on, on this, if you're jotting down. Perspective and possibilities, number one. Secondly, provision, power, and praise. How does God move us through those avenues as he's lifting up our spirit, lifting up our hope, expanding our vision, and setting our feet uh, for the future journey, preparing us for the future journey ahead. So let's go on and dive right into this word. If you've got your Bibles with you and you'll turn with me to chapter 3 of the book of Acts, uh, let me just start reading this storyline and let's dive right into this. I've got two life lessons to share with you today. It says in verse 1, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. He came to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them for alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. If you're jotting down, let me give you this first life lesson. We have it up on the screen for you if you're on our website today. It's simply this. When when your perspective on life is shaped by your circumstances in life, look up to Jesus for hope, for help, and for wholeness. And let me say that one more time if you're jotting it down. When your perspective on life is shaped by your circumstances in life, look up to Jesus for hope, for help, and for wholeness. Let's dive right into the storyline. It tells us now, again, remember, we're at uh, Jesus has been resurrected, and the disciples have seen him. He's now ascended into heaven. He's told them, the Lord, I am with you always. Go and make disciples, teaching the word. He's given them the commandment. They've been empowered. They've been transformed. They've been reshaped. Their purpose has been refocused. And now they're in the process of 
of sharing out, of moving out, and, and, and sharing this good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ throughout the country, countryside, throughout indeed all of the world. And now Peter and John are doing what they customarily do is they headed toward the temple. They're, they're still in Jerusalem. They're still uh, Jewish men, and they're still following the rituals, if you will. They're heading towards the Jerusalem in the hour, the, the normal hour of prayer, the text tells us. And we're reminded that there they encounter a man, a certain man who has been lame from his mother's birth. It tells us that his friends had carried him there on a daily basis so that he could earn his living and make his way. And he did that by begging at the temple gate, at the gate of beautiful. But this was a very special encounter day for him. Something, something different is about to happen. Something marvelous is about to take place. Something, something eye-opening and strengthening is about to happen in his very life. You see, when, 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 when they encounter him in this dialogue, they enter into this dialogue by connecting with them. They're now taking on the characteristics of the very Christ that had connected with them during their difficult moments, during the times when they were feeling downtrodden and alienated and ostracized and helpless and hopeless. Jesus had connected with them. Now the resurrected, they, their spirit has been resurrected. Their hope had been resurrected. And now Peter and John have an opportunity to live out and to work out that salvation which God had indeed, Christ had indeed worked inside of them. And they encounter this man who's at the temple gate, beautiful, begging for alms. Uh, and, and they fasten their eyes. The text says they fasten, Peter fastens his eyes on him along with John and says to him, look up, look, look at us. Now what I encountered that was different for me as I was studying at this time was I found myself this Holy Spirit pulling me up, pulling a seat up beside uh, this, this crippled man from birth, trying to step into his episode, step into his pain, step into his hopelessness, step into his sense of helplessness, trying to get my mind wrapped around what is he feeling at this moment. Can you cope with me there now, church? Can you, can you put yourself on the scene to the best of your ability? and try to imagine what must it have felt like to never have felt strength in your legs, to never have walked from birth, it tells me, to have to depend on people, your friends, to carry you down to the temple place where you would indeed be begging for arms, not able to have a vocational livelihood necessarily because of the handicap that you're dealing with, but having friends that God had placed in your life who, who, who indeed wanted to do something uh, to bless you, wanting to do something to help you. But here's what I noticed in the process. There is a perspective that, that this, this gentleman had, this man who was, who was born crippled from his birth, lame from his birth. There was a, his circumstances had shaped his outlook on life. It had shaped his perspective on life. It had shaped his, 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 his whole sense of what the future could look like. And not only had it shaped his, but it had shaped the very people around him. Nobody expected. He had never walked before, so he never imagined what it would feel like in his, leg, in his legs to have strength and to be able to get up and walk. His friends never visualized what it would be like for him to have strength in his legs and to get up and walk and run and leap and do all of those things that were natural and normal for them. And in the midst of that, his, his circumstances had had shaped over his lifelong journey of pain and sorrow and, 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 and inability to do what he, loved, what he would love to be able to do. His circumstances and his situation and his livelihood had been diminished by his handicap. And he couldn't visualize in his mind that he would be able to do these great miraculous things going forward. So he settled in to the mindset that all that he could do, what he could do was what he could do. And that was to merely have someone to carry him to the temple and to beg alms. But here's what I kind of noticed. Here's what I found the Holy Spirit reflecting on me. It made me think about it. I said, well, wait a minute. This is the same guy. This, this, this same guy who was in Jerusalem had to be present, had to be in the environment when indeed Jesus was coming in and they were putting the raving the palms and stretching them down on the road as he was coming in triumphantly on the donkey to Jerusalem 
and on Palm Sunday, he had to be hearing the, the cheers of the crowds when they were waving the palms and laying their coats down on the road and shouting, Hosanna, coming king, the king, coming king of Jerusalem, of Israel. He had to be in the vicinity and hear the uproar, uproar and the powerful voices of those who were proclaiming that he indeed, Jesus, had given life back to Lazarus. He had to hear about how Jesus had given sight to the blind. He, he certainly had heard the stories about how he had given strength to the legs of those who had not walked before, cast out demons, controlled the winds and the waves. Somewhere, somebody must have told him about this Jesus who spoke like no man ever spoke before and did miracles like no man had ever done before and proclaimed that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And yet in hearing all of that, his hope had been dashed because he, was, he had to be in Jerusalem when they nailed Jesus to the cross and put him in the tomb. And just maybe he heard from the disciples that he had rose again. And almost like Peter and the boys when they said last Sunday, we, we're going back to fishing. Perhaps if he had any sense of hope that maybe this Jesus would come by and bring healing to his life, it had been dashed uh, by the reality uh, that he saw him perhaps on the cross. The other insight that I found myself gleaning is that it's the insight of, of Peter and John. Because I'm sensing here in the text that Peter and John are relating. They are, they are not just sympathizing with the man. But there's a sense of empathy with the man. There's a sense that he, he, they're able to step into his moment of hopelessness. They're able to step into his moment of helplessness. They were able to step into his moment of, 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 of feeling insecure and doubtful and fearful because they'd been down some of that road. They had not been lame from their birth, but they knew what it felt like to, be, to have given up hope and to have Jesus come and resurrect their hope and give them a new sense of vision and purpose and being. And, and because they had been resurrected, because now their hope had been resurrected, and God had given, Jesus Christ had given them a powerful new mission and purpose in life, they now had the opportunity to share it out. They had the opportunity to work out that salvation. They had the opportunity to demonstrate and, and to communicate the care and the, the sharing heart of Jesus and step into the moment that this man was wrestling with, the circumstances that he was fearing. You see, every now and then, church family, I don't know where you are today, but if you think back over your journey, is there a moment, is there a situation in your life when, when you, can maybe, you can maybe, like Peter and John, relate to this, this individual, and you pull up a seat beside him and say, I, I, I don't know your pain, but I've got some pain that I've, got some pain that I've gone through that, has some resemblance to what you've gone through. I, I don't know your fears, but, but every now and then I, I get a little fear inside of me, a little doubt in me that makes me wonder uh, what today and tomorrow might bring. I don't know what your sense of hopelessness is, but, but every now and then I've gone through a little bit of a journey when it feels like my hope is being suppressed and depressed by the circumstances around me, and I know I got a sense of what it feels like to have the life situations impact my perspective on life. And so my sense is that Peter and John have stepped into the moment with him. Peter and John have, uh, have uh, stepped, have, have ushered, have, have allowed themselves to walk into his pain and, and, and get a sense of what he's wrestling with. And, he, and when he opens up, he, and, he, and, he, and they fasten, the text tells me, they fasten their eyes on him. It's just to draw his attention away from the, the thing he's been doing all of his life journey to survive, to move his perspective away from his circumstances. In other words, like Christ tells us today, he says, don't, don't get your eyes all focused in on the things that are happening around you. I'm, he's not saying don't be aware of what's happening. He says, but don't focus so heavily on your circumstances, on your pain, on your anger, on your fear, on your depression, on your doubts. Don't get all caught up in the, the things of the world to the point that you lose sight of the one who's in charge of it all. Peter and John said, look on us. Don't look at what's happening. 
Take your mind off of it for a moment. Take your mind off of your crippleness for a moment and look on us. You see, when your perspective of life is shaped by your circumstances, it has a way of depressing you. It has a way of, of pushing us down. It has a way of closing our mind to, to greater possibilities. It has a way of trying to separate us from the, from the reality of the love of Christ operating in our lives. When your perspective on life is shaped by your circumstances in life, it, it has a way of dulling your spirit and depressing your hope and, and making you feel a sense of helplessness. It is, it is a false sense of helplessness, because if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then the text says, look up to Jesus for your hope, for your help, and for your wholeness. And the disciples say, look on us, look on us. And the text says, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from him. So you see, the perspective hasn't changed completely. The perspective is really still I'm coming to you for alms. I'm asking for money from you. And, 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 and I'm, as I look up, I'm looking up, still expecting my, my mindset hasn't been transformed yet. I'm still in my old circumstances, so I'm doing the same thing, expecting the same thing. And then comes a powerful word from Peter who says, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I need you to catch this one moment, church family. Wherever you are, I need for you to think about it. Step into your moment right now. What is it that you're wrestling with? What is it that you're struggling with? What is it that's, having, that's suppressing your hope? What is, it, what is it that's bringing fear and anxiety into your life cycle there? What is that? Jesus says, look up to him. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't ignore them, but look to him and then look at your circumstances because if you measure your ability against your mountains, then your mountain will always look larger than your ability to overcome. But if you measure your mountain against your Savior, then your Savior is always larger than any mountain you can possibly be facing. Look up to Jesus for your hope and your help and your wholeness. And then he speaks words of, of miraculous kingdom vision, prophetic vision into him. <laughs> he, he says to him, he gives him, uh, he give, Peter gives him an inspiration, he gives him a hope, he gives him, indeed he gives him a command that is impossible for him to fulfill in the natural. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And you know everything inside of him says, but I have never walked. You're asking me to do something that is impossible, that I have never done, and I cannot even see the possibility of ever doing. Because my perspective on my life has been shaped over years of my circumstances in life. This is what spiritual transformation begins to look like. This is what the resurrection of hope begins to look like. Let me keep on reading. And he, Peter, took him by the right hand, in verse 7, and lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. <laughs> and all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat at arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Oh, somebody's at home praising right now. Yeah, I can almost hear you. I can hear you through my spiritual ear. You start getting your hands clapping right there because you can hear, you can see the miraculous work of Jesus and you know what it feels like. Let me give you this second life lesson. We're going to put it up on the screen for you if you're, if you're on the website. When your mind, body, and spirit are uplifted and energized 
for new kingdom purposes and possibilities. Praise God and walk victoriously in Christ. I need to say that. I need to read that twice for you. When, when, when your mind, the body, and spirit are uplifted and energized for new kingdom purposes and possibilities, praise God and walk victoriously in Christ. Remember, our themes are perspective and possibilities, provision, power, and praise. Here we go now. We, we're getting into the provision, power, and praise time with our time together here. The text takes us. Peter says, Peter and John say, look up at me. Then he tells them it's not about silver and gold. It's not about your finances. It's not about your material circumstances. It's not about your lack of vision. It's not about your lack of purpose. It's not about, it's not about any of that. Jesus sees something inside of you that's much greater than you can possibly see in yourself. You see yourself only as a cripple who comes down on a daily basis asking for handouts for other folk. Jesus sees a mighty warrior in Christ in him that's able to someday stand up and do powerful works, of kingdom works on his behalf. You see yourself as only somebody who needs to be carried from place to place, totally dependent, a victim of the world's circumstances. Jesus sees you as a conqueror, more than a conqueror, the text tells me, a victor, victor of all of your situations in his power and in his wisdom. Come walk alongside him. And so Peter reaches out and grabs him by the hand. I love this. He, does, he could have just pronounced it. He said, get up, and, get up and walk. Get up and walk in the name of Jesus, he told him. But Peter reaches out as if to make contact, as if to to lend a hand, brother to brother, as if to say, I, I know some of what you've gone through. I've been down some of that journey. As if Peter could have said out to him out loud, I'm the one that denied him three times, and he came back and told me to confess him three times. I'm the one who made all of these mistakes, and yet Jesus, the grace of Jesus, the grace of God is greater than any situation I could possibly have faced, any wrong I possibly could have done, any sin I possibly could have committed. So Peter reaches down and grabs him and locks arms with him as if to tell him, I'm with you, with brother. I'm, I'm in this with you. You're not alone with this. And pulls him up. And the text tells me as he pulls up, the strength hits his legs and he starts standing, leaping and walking and praising God, something he's never done before. Somebody in the house has been down this journey. Somebody in the house, somebody in the in, on online church today, somebody in the e-church today, it may not be that the Lord has stood you up and made you to walk, but you've been down in some valleys, and you know what it feels like to be in the shadow of the valley of death itself. And you've had the Lord reach down and take you by the hand and pull you up and stand you up. <laughs> oh, man, I can almost see some folk running through the house now. I can see you running through your house right there. Leaping, standing, walking. He ran right in with them into the temple, leaping, stand, walking, and praising God. And you see, it's not just enough. You know, when, when, he, when the Lord transforms your, your spirit, when he transforms your mind, when he transforms your body and gives you new purpose, gives you new vision, gives you new energy, gives you new power, it gives you, gives you this new sense of provision in your life, then you know that God's giving it to you for a purpose. You're no longer known as the cripple sitting by the gate beautiful. God is giving you a brand new name in glory. Oh, I feel like my preaching's coming on this morning. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. There's a testimony. There's a testimony that comes with transformation. There's a response that comes with resurrection of hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's praise that comes along with the power God gives us. It's not to be kept inside of us. They knew that this was the same God that sat at arms in the gate beautiful of the temple. And it says the audience, the, the crowd, was filled with wonder and amazement at that which happened unto him. So we've been spending these weeks talking about how God reaches out and resurrects our hope in the midst of our moments of hopelessness and helplessness and our sense of haplessness. But when God, Peter and, Paul, Peter and John, when, when God 
has resurrected your hope, when God has strengthened you, giving you realize indeed that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, and that old things have passed away and all things are become new. When you recognize that, that you're not a victim, but you're a victor, that you're more than a conqueror, as the text tells you, when you realize that nothing can separate you from the love of Christ Jesus, then you have a new purpose because you're a new person and you have a new plan operating in your life. And along with that plan comes the opportunity and the privilege and indeed the obligation to get out and share that good news with somebody. Somebody's sitting, somebody is figuratively sitting at the gate with arms, asking for arms, passing by your life. And you need to be able to reach your hand out and touch them in the precious name of Jesus and have them to focus not on their circumstances, but focus on Jesus for their hope, their help, and their healing. And if you have to take them by the hand and stand them up and walk alongside them, then walk with them like Jesus would because he lifted you up, stood you up, and gave you a brand new beginning. And the, and the impact of that will be that others will see. And they'll wonder, and they'll be amazed. And they say, oh, now, I remember you when you were back in the day. <laughs> but back in, you can remind them, but back in the day was back in the day. I'm not that same old guy you saw sitting at the gate, beautiful. I'm not that same old victim, not that same old gal who you saw hanging out wherever. They said, we're, we're, we're not in that same place, and I'm not that same person. Because Jesus stood me up, firmed me up, girded me up and empowered me to walk when he, 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 he has transformed and resurrected my hope, transformed my mind, body, and spirit, and I'm a new creature. I've been uplifted and energized for kingdom purposes and possibilities, and now I'm about to build a business of walking victoriously and praising God endlessly. That's what happens when your hope is resurrected. Perspective and possibilities are transformed. God's provision and his power are communicated and exhibited to you. And praise flows from every aspect of your being. When your perspective in, on life is shaped by your circumstances in life, look up to Jesus for hope, help, and, whole, and wholeness. And when your mind, body, and spirit are uplifted and energized, for new kingdom purposes and possibilities, praise God and walk victoriously in Christ Jesus. The songwriter began to pick up the powerful Begin to pick up the powerful phraseology in one of the hymns that have been my favorite down through the years. And he sort of captured what was happening with, even with this uh, lame individual at the moment. He, you know this, he said, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest Upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. And then you can hear him crescendoing up each and every verse. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to trust his cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me. Neath the healing, cleansing flood. Yes, it's sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. And finally, he crescendos, I'm so glad I've learned to trust him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me, to the end, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. 
If the Lord has moved on your heart today, you feel his transforming power moving in your life. You want to accept him as Lord and Savior. Take this moment and, and just invite him in. He's faithful to transform you, to make you new. Drop us a note and let us know so that we can be praying for you. If you need to connect with the church family, we are here for you, either through our e-church, if you're not in our area, or physically as we open up our doors in the weeks ahead. So, Father God, we thank you. And we ask your blessings on all those who have tuned in and shared in this worship with us that you have moved, we pray that you have moved on their hearts, their minds, their spirits, touched them in a very special way, resurrected their hope and lifted them into greater purpose, perspective, provision, power, and peace in and through you. We will be faithful, and we are thankful for all the opportunities you give to share this good news. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we pray it all, that all God's people say, amen and amen. Before we, get, before we enter into our communion service together, you can begin getting your bread and everything together soon. We invite the first lady to come back up, close out our worship portion and song. God bless you and keep you. Amen. Day is almost night. I don't want to lose.
have your bread and your juice available as we enter into our time of communion. During the Passion Week, the week in which Jesus gave his life on the cross for your sins and for mine. Hallelujah! The Bible, the Word of God shares with us that he gathered in Jerusalem in an upper room with his closest disciples. They're sharing the Passover meal. He took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. Heavenly Father, please bless this bread that we're about to receive, the living bread representing the bread of life, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he ate it. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. Let's eat together. Likewise, Jesus took the cup. And he blessed it. So, Heavenly Father, we ask your special blessings upon the cup that we're sharing virtually throughout the world today through this service representing the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all our sins. We thank you that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten Son that we who believe in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. They took the cup and together they drank it. Let's drink together. said after they shared the Passover meal, they went out to the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. We would normally be closing out with victory. Today is mine. But right now, if you bow your heads and your eyes closed and hearts humbled before the living God, as you assume an attitude of prayer and right where you are in your homes, lift your hands in praise. And now unto him who is able to keep you and me from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let's all God's people throughout all of the land say amen and amen. May God bless you and keep you. Have a fabulous week. Life lessons will begin next Sunday, but between now and next Sunday, join us on Mondays through Fridays with our written Bible 
devotions that we send out to you on Facebook Live. But join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays around the noon hour for our devotional moments, our teachable moments with Bishop Love. Seven-minute devotional that I'll be sharing out. We're praying that the Lord will use you mightily, transforming, resurrecting your hope so that you might be a source of hope to others. In Jesus' holy name we pray. God bless you and God keep you. Amen and amen.